What is up guys, it's your boy Swalam here, back with another classic WoW video for Season of Discovery. Now, very recently I made a video talking about a Badlands gold farm, now the thumbnail of that video looks like this. It should have gone public at the same time as this video, and if you have my gold making guide then both of these will be available in early access, so you can take advantage of them before they go public. Just in case you're watching this when they do go public, you could have had access to the farm for probably about a week before the videos came out. So if you want to check it out, the link to the guide will be down below, it's 134 pages. Actually, we just had a phase 2 update, so it's 157 now. And the guide itself is supposed to guide you through what to do and how to make gold. And then you get access to a private gold making community that will help you make even more gold. It's a great way to, to, to support me, and I believe that I'm going to be able to help you make some gold in return. So if you want to check it out, the link will be down below. Now, just to give a quick TLDR on this video and the farm we're doing, it's a guard trick so you were tricking the guards into helping us and we're getting all the loot without even dealing half the mob's health usually in classic wow you have to deal 50 percent of the mob's health yourself to get loot from the guards now by having someone in your party be at the same place and then putting the loot to free for all somehow you will circumvent the whole guard thing like the whole loot thing so you don't have to deal any damage well you do have to deal some damage you have to tag the mob basically bring them back to the guard and the guards will take care of them for you. Now the basis of this farm, we're basically doing the old farm but improved and there's a couple of things I didn't cover in that video that I want to cover in this one. Well there's mainly one thing and that's the fact that you can use this to hunt down rares and get items that are really really lucrative in phase 3 and phase 4 that we shouldn't technically have access to right now in phase 2. Personally I'm using an add-on called Rare Scanner to show me the rough location of every single rare in Blasted Lands and then running in a circuit fashion around the rares, just trying not to pull anything while doing that, which can be difficult sometimes, plus Teramus is uh, patrolling all around this place, so just be wary of him. Don't pull him back, he's, he's gonna wipe the guards, but regular rares, you are fine to take those back. So I did do a circle before the video here, and there should be a rare all the way over here, and because almost nobody's doing this farm, you can find the rares all the time. So if you just have all of them on rotation, you can basically keep them keep them on downtime, so whenever they're down, you know they're down, you can even layer swap, so you can hunt down the rares on multiple layers. Now there's one rare that is relatively easy to get to, and that's this guy over here. There's like a scorpid that is going to be patrolling roughly around this location, and you just have to like find him. Now finding him could be the worst part, really just depends, but you have to like get your way through all of these high levels, or you can actually pull them back as well and kill those as well. But if you can somehow not pull them right now, that is perfect and then keep looking for rares around this place uh, there's no rares over here but if i can just get myself through the middle there's like a scorpid somewhere around here clack the reaver he's patrolling all across the place though so like he's patrolling here further down and even like all the way over to this side so you just want to be here look for the rares and pull them back so here I, for example, have Clack the Reaver, and uh, he's patrolling towards me right now in a pretty good place, I, I would say. So what I can do here is just literally do a shot on him, try not to get any other mobs on him, and then start pulling him back and bring him towards the guards. Just keep him leashed all the time, you could even send in your pet to like extend the leash timer, because that way the leash will juggle between you and your pet. Now on the way back, just be a little bit careful about not pulling any mobs on the way back if you can, and then just keep running along the path and just keep him leashed as much as you can. So just keep auto shooting, use arcane shots, even slow him down if he gets too close. The whole point here is just to keep him leashed until you get to the guards and then make the guards help you kill the rare. I mean, we're even dealing a lot of damage on the mob on the way back, so you don't even you wouldn't even have to use the guard trick. Being a hunter, you can hit so many of your hits pretty much all the time. So it doesn't really matter that much. I'm just going to send in my pet here to extend the whole uh, leash timer as well. Now, moving up the path here be extremely extremely careful for um, Teramus spawns and if you have to you can actually go up the other ledge like you can go up where I'm marking on the map right now and go that way instead but because I don't see Teramus I'm just going to go the normal way or quote unquote the normal way and just once again bring the rare to the guards and because the rare is an aggressive mob the guards should attack him very soon here 
so just keep him slow and bring him towards the guards, and then watch the guards take away at his health, and you get all the loot for it. Even now, you can literally feign death if you want to, but I'm just going to keep him slowed and keep him over here and do some damage as well, and help the guards out. The rears do have a little bit more health. Now, there's a couple of reasons why you want to focus more on rears rather than just regular mobs, and that's their loot table. Like, rears have a pretty significant loot table compared to regular mobs. They can even they ha even have a much higher drop chance of the flawless Dramathist Sphere, which hopefully we get one here so we can look at, otherwise we're gonna go to Wowhead and look at it over there. Now, when you have him here, you can literally just ledge kite back and forth, and you can see the guards are hacking away at him as well, and just keep jumping back and forth, right? Using some clever <laughs> game mechanics here, or cl clever mob pathing, I should say. So he just died, and we have all the loot from him, of course. I even dealt 1.4k damage to him, but definitely the guards, they really do help. Now, unfortunately, we didn't get the blue item we were looking for, but we did get a green. So when you're killing rares like this, you have a much higher chance of both getting greens and blues. So really, it's worth looking for those rares, and once again, using an add-on called the Rare Scanner, you can see roughly where they are. So download the Rare Scanner if you haven't, if you don't have it already. I do think a lot of people do have this, but it gives you like a mark on the map of roughly where they are and where you saw him last time. And if you shift click and you like you, if you if you right click, you can see every single spawn location, like where they can be. So Ravage, for example, can be both over here and over there. And clicking it one more time, you can see it goes away. Going to Clack, you can see all of his spawn locations as well, and then you know exactly where to go and what you're looking for. Now, once again, rares have a really good loot table when it comes to everything here, and they're really worth looking for. If you don't find any rares, you can go back to just killing normal mobs, but try to look for the rares first, and then layer swap as well. At the moment, almost nobody's doing the farm, and you can get absolutely rich. So, why rares? What are we hunting for? So first of all, the rares, once again, they do have a much higher chance of giving you a green item. Pretty much on every single kill, you will be getting a green item. Now, sometimes you don't, but for the most part, you end up getting a green item. And most of them will be trash, some of them will be really good. As you can see, they can roll with random stats, so if you get a really good off piece that ends up being Prebis in phase 3, because you roll, let's just say you roll strength and agility, and that ends up being better than any option, those previous items can sell for a lot of gold in phase 3, and the random enchantments do make it so either it's going to be good, or it's going to be trash. Like for example, stamina and intellect will be really good for PvP, and also boosting, like any mage or even like PvP player who wants to have stamina and intellect, also spell power of course, but stamina and intellect are pretty good, and strength and agility will be wanted by every warrior out there, and maybe even like... um maybe even hunters, melee hunters, right? So yeah, strength and agility, really good stats to roll. And once again, most of the greens do have random stats, so they will either be trash or they'll be really good. On top of that, I was under the impression that rares can and have a higher drop chance of the flawless Dranisith Sphere. Now, Wowhead disagrees with me on this one and says that they can't even drop them. I don't really know about that one. Apparently, the only mobs they can drop them, according to Wowhead, are a couple of mobs in Badlands, uh, not Badlands, Lands with Blasted Lands and Terra Mustard Devourer. Now, in the past, the Flawless Sphere has been like a higher drop chance from rares and elites in Badlands, so take that with a grain of salt. But this one, once again, it's an objective of a quest, like if it ends up being a higher drop chance from. I'm just gonna open the item here so you can like you hand them in for a quest and handing in one of these flawless spheres gives you this item and this item can contain a lot of blues even epics and the traveler's backpack so all of these blues are boe and tradable and they're really really good and once again a couple of epics in here and the traveler's backpacks as well so getting access to these spheres is absolutely insane especially right now in phase two when we technically shouldn't even have access to them at all. So yeah, if you haven't tried the farm yet, definitely worth trying out, and I just wanted to make this video to talk about the aspect of hunting down the rares. So just get rare scanner, look at their locations, and while farming mobs in blasted lands while doing the farm, take a look at the rare spawns and see if you can grab one. Either way, that's the video. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like down below, let me know how it works out for you in the comments as well. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again very soon.